So in this video, we're going to talk briefly about the concept of density, and then we're going to talk about the types of problems you might see on the MCAT. So density is essentially the measure of how much stuff is in a given area. So as an example, let's say we had a ball of styrofoam and a ball of steel, right? Uh, the ball of styrofoam, even if they're the same size, say the ball of styrofoam, ball of styrofoam is going to be a lot lighter than the ball of steel, right? The ball of steel is going to feel heavier. It's going to feel like it has more stuff inside of it. Uh, and that's because of density. And different materials have different densities. And density is typically a property of a given material. Uh, and density is typically constant for a given material. Um, and the, the equation for figuring out density is mass. Let's change the pen. Let's use a pen that we can see a little better. Uh, let's use this one. Is mass over volume. And density is typically given in units of mass over volume. So for example, kilograms per meter cubed, grams per milliliter. All of these are units of volume. And the specific unit doesn't necessarily matter. What matters is we always have mass on the top and volume on the bottom. So on the MCAT, you might see a problem where you're given two of the three. You're given either mass, volume, or density. And you're asked to figure out uh, the third one. So you'd want to look for a mass, and you'd want to look for a volume, or you'd want to look for a value like this. And from that, you can calculate density. That's pretty straightforward. That's pretty simple, right? It seems pretty clear. Now, what can we talk about with mass specifically, with uh, density, excuse me, specifically? Well, there is this value called specific gravity. Specific gravity is essentially, it's the density of a particular material, so density of, let's say, x over the density of water. Right? So um, that's why we see, for example, that the density of water is 1, because the density of water over the density of water would just be equal to 1. But we get an interesting value for some other, uh, for some others of these. For example, olive oil is a, has a density of about 0.91. And uh, if you've ever done the the classic middle school science experiment, where take a really tall glass, right? And typically, what they'll do is they'll put, they'll pour some water, and the water will be in the middle. Then they'll put some syrup on the bottom, and they'll put some oil on the top, right? So why does the oil go to the top? Well, because oil has a specific, the lowest specific gravity of the three. Uh, because oil uh, is the least dense, right? So specific gravity is the ratio of the density of an object or density of a material to the density of water. So anything below one is going to float in water. Oops. Let's erase that. Anything below one is going to float in water, and anything above one is going to sink in water, right? Uh, so this is specific gravity. Another thing specific gravity tells us, which is kind of interesting, uh, is it tells us the percentage of a substance that will float in water, uh, or the percentage of the substance that will be uh, submerged in water. So as an example, ice has a specific gravity of about 0.9. So we can put it roughly in the middle here. And so um, if we have the ocean, ocean is obviously water, and then we have an iceberg, well, about one-tenth of that iceberg is going to float, or 0 0.1, and about 0.9 of its volume is going to be underwater, or 9 out of 10, right? And that can be determined from its specific gravity. So because ice's specific gravity is 0 0.9, then uh, about 9 tenths of it will be underwater. So in every situation, about nine-tenths of an iceberg would be underwater. And uh, just a fun aside, that's why, for example, a ship like the Titanic might not see an iceberg. The iceberg is actually very small above the water, but it's very huge underwater. And so they might hit the iceberg thinking that it's a very small one, but in fact it's much larger because most of it is not visible underwater, especially at night. So anyway, putting going back to the idea of specific gravity, this is the value of specific gravity. It tells us uh, the density of an object relative to water, and it tells us how much of it will 
uh, be underwater when the object is floating. Uh, we can also compare specific gravities to one another. Um, so for example, iron has a specific gravity of 7.87. Um, this table, by the way, I took from Wikipedia. So you can find specific gravities of pretty much any substance. But this is just a sample of some substances. So iron has a specific gravity of about 7.87. And we see that mercury, for example, has a specific gravity of 13.56. So something else that we can figure out from this is that if we took iron and put it in mercury, we could make it float, which would be very interesting because we know iron is typically very, very heavy, very dense. And it is very dense. It's about almost eight times as dense as water. Um, so iron is very dense. It's very heavy. But it would actually float uh, in mercury. And people have done this experiment before. So this is somebody who did the experiment. Uh, he took an iron anvil and dropped it in liquid mercury. And we see that it is floating. It floats. So even though, even though iron is very heavy and very dense, it floats quite well, you can see. So that is an interesting application of specific gravity and concept of density.